Hey guys, I am Game Advisor, and welcome to our Warhammer 40k Dark Tide Beginner's Guide. I know that's a mouthful, but basically today we're going to be going over a lot of mechanics that are not explained to the players, things that you would not know intuitively, and things you just may not know if you haven't played any of the previous Tide series, such as Vermintide 1 or 2. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into the video, but do keep in mind there is a good chance you will find something useful in here, even if you are extremely experienced with the game. Let's start off by talking about what you should be doing at the very beginning, and that is playing through the full tutorial. After you finish the prologue, you'll be able to play through a beginner's tutorial, and then it will give you the option to play the advanced one. I highly recommend you do this as it's going to explain some more mechanics for you that are definitely worth noting. I'm not going to go into depth about what those are as it's something you can play through in about five minutes and it'll give you tons of information. However, they do not explain everything to you during that advanced tutorial and some of the things they don't explain is the fact that there are directors within the game. Directors are essentially AI that will start to send enemy units at you based on different situations. Sometimes these directors can be more aggressive or less aggressive, sometimes they'll like to send a lot of small units, and sometimes they'll like to send a lot of elite units. These can be changed based on modifiers and the difficulty you're playing as well as the different situations. For an example, if let's say you're at a key point during a mission where you have to defend an objective, there's a good chance that he's going to get a bunch of extra points every so often, and then he'll send a wave during that point in time. An important thing to keep in mind though about these directors is that they aren't stupid. They know when someone gets separated from their group, and they will actually target a separated player. This means if you're playing solo and not sticking with the group, the director will notice that and then try to send elites at you in order to get you downed when you don't have a group around to help. This is why you start to notice things like the Plague Hounds intentionally going after the player who did not stick with the group. The director is trying to get you pinned down and separated from each other. They even send in special elites who are specifically designed to do that. I don't know if you've noticed, but if you've been playing the game and you see a bomber, which are the big grenade throwing guys, those guys tend to put a big giant pool of flame on the ground and people tend to get separated on opposite sides. So the director will actually send units at you that try to separate you from your team and then send things like plague hounds and mutants in order to pound down and destroy those players that got separated. This means when playing in Dark Tide, especially at the higher difficulties where the AI seems to start getting a little bit smarter and you start to have more elites to deal with, you really, really want to focus upon staying together at all times, at least as much as possible. Now, if you guys want to help support charity and make the universe a better place, at least a better place than the Warhammer universe, you can do so by checking out Humble Bundle in the description below. If you click the link we have down there, it'll take you to Humble Bundle where you can find games for cheaper prices than you can often on Steam, and you can also help support charity as well as our channel all at the same time. If that's something you're interested in again, since it's going to help charity, help our channel, and save you money all at the same time, just again, consider clicking the link down below, but other Otherwise, let's go ahead and jump back into talking about the video. Now, speaking of enemies, one of the biggest struggles that most groups have at the beginning is dealing with the ranged targets. These are basically just anything that has a ranged attack, and especially in large groups, where they'll start spraying you down and shooting you from a distance while sending in small hordes of weaker enemies in order to keep the pressure on. You'll find that you'll get shredded by the ranged guys if you don't actually use cover to your advantage, so the next thing I would recommend to you is as a new player, always be looking for something that you can hide behind in case you start getting hit by a ton of ranged targets. These guys will absolutely melt you in the higher difficulties if you decide to just stand out in the open and you don't deal with them. Of course, you do have the option of trying to suppressively fire them, which will force them to all run to cover, but after that initial suppressive fire, they'll tend to be separated too much so you can't really properly suppress them. At that point in time, your best bet to deal with them is to either break line of sight and wait for them to come to you or jump out and pick one or two off whenever you have enough toughness left, or make sure you go out of your way to actually get to them as quickly as possible and make sure that you can close that gap as once you're in melee they'll stop shooting and they're very weak at least in compared to their ranged form. Now as far as the melee aspect of the game goes, it's super important to understand that blocking and pushing is your main way of keeping yourself 
safe. I see this constantly in the lower tiers of difficulty and when the people are newer to the game, and that's that you want to constantly be blocking, shoving, and then attacking. If you're just swinging your attack, you're going to get hit now and then, and as you get to those higher difficulties, it won't be just one or two damage you're taking. It'll be five, it'll be 10, it'll be 20, and that's enough to start chipping you down very, very quickly. So whenever you have a horde or just a lot of melee units in range, make sure you're blocking blocking, shoving them to get them off their footing, and then start swinging a couple of times, then block again, shove, swing, block, shove, swing, rinse, repeat, recycle, and then also just don't forget that you have a dodge. So many players forget this, but all you need to do is just take a step back with spacebar when do that little dodge mechanism, and that can easily save you from taking tons of damage. For an example, if the mutant charges at you and you dodge to the side as it's charging, it will actually run past you and sometimes hit a wall, allowing it to get stunned and for your team to do extra damage. Now, as far as teamwork goes, one thing you want to keep in mind is that each different class provides a different passive buff to the group. This is very important as when you have two of the exact same class in your group, you're not going to get a stacking buff. So for an example, let's say one of those passive buffs just makes it so your toughness regenerates a little bit faster. If you have two of that same class that provide that buff, then you are not going to get that buff twice. So you're only going to get that buff the one time and you're losing out on getting a new passive buff that you would be getting by having another class that that class would be stacking with. I know it's confusing, but basically what this boils down to is try to bring one of each class if possible, especially once you start hitting difficulty three, four, and five. Another important thing to remember that the game doesn't really tell you is that you're going to get the same amount of XP permission no matter how many enemy units you kill. So you could say take out every single unit in the entire mission and completely carry your team, but you're still going to get the same amount of XP as everybody else did as well as currency. So don't be afraid if somebody else gets a kill. There's no such thing as really kill stealing here as there's no benefit for somebody to steal your kill per se. So it's just something to keep in mind that when you're playing the game, it's not a big deal if someone ends up accidentally killing a mob that you were trying to kill. If anything, you should be happy that it's now dead and no longer a threat because everybody gets the same reward for finishing the mission. Now, I do have two very important things I want to leave you with, and these are going to be the fact that you should be first off spamming the ping button a lot of the time. And when I say the ping button, that's going to be your middle mouse button in if you're on PC or whatever it is, if you happen to be playing on some other platform or something like that. But either way, when you spam that ping button, it's going to highlight an elite and it will only target elites. This is going to make it so much easier for you guys to figure out who are high priority targets and who need to be dealt with First, if you have a Psyker, they'll be able to target them and pick them out of a crowd a lot easier, as well as the veterans, which can make a huge difference in your team's survivability. It also allows you to see enemies through walls. So if, say, you ping a bomber and he runs behind a wall after throwing a grenade at you, you'll know where he's at and where he's going to pop out next so you can kill him before he gets a chance to throw off another grenade. And the other thing I wanted to leave you with, and I know this is silly and seems really simple, but actually open up your inventory and go to your feats and read exactly what your abilities do. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of your abilities have huge impacts and have passives that you wouldn't necessarily notice. For an example, if you're playing a Psyker and you use your special ability, it will actually get rid of some of your overheating basically mechanism that you have, as well as if you're playing a Zealot and you use the charge forward ability, you're actually going to be getting a portion of your toughness back. These are all different things for every class, and a lot of abilities have hidden little things that you wouldn't necessarily notice unless you read the tooltips. So take the minute or two to go read all your abilities and see exactly what they do. Otherwise, if you guys want to see more Dark Tide content, make sure to like this video to let us know, or just let us know in the comment section down below. Either way, I want to give a big shout out to our Platinum and Above channel members, which include Caustic FPV, Jonathan S, and Jim Phillips. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.